Shabbat Shalom, my Hebrews and Hebrews. Welcome back to our daily bread with the prophets. And we're having to add Matthew in here this time because my last video got cut off right at the end of Proverbs. And so we're just going to improvise, adapt, and overcome. That's what we do. Um, as long as we're reading his word and getting it in us, that's all that matters. And as we do our daily bread, I have a little commentary, but I'm mainly, I'm just um, sticking with the, the plan, um, which originally the 10 club, which I've reduced to the five club um, for the time purposes on video. Um, for six and a half years, almost seven years now, I've been reading 10 chapters a day. And I miss a day here and there. There's, there's times that I'd miss a day or or wouldn't get all three chapters of the old or all three chapters of the new, something like that. But I stay pretty diligent. And that's what I want to teach about this is being diligent to reading this word every day, regardless. And I've had some frustrations this morning with getting the prophets part of the daily bread um, made. Um, I've had technical issue after technical issue. But again, we're going to adapt and overcome. So I'm going to flip the camera around. I've got another uh, video of um, mountains and trees and rivers and, and, you know, peace. And that's what we need today. And we have all this bad news around us. Um, and we've got to look for good. We've got to look for the goodness of Yahweh. And so I'm going to flip the camera around. We're going to read Matthew chapter 12. Then we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 13 um, and Hosea chapter 4. So, Pray this will bless you, encourage you, and even frustrate you. Go look it up for yourself. Go go have this inspire you to go diligently dig in. And, and we're going to read Matthew 12. And there's like a dozen studies that we could go off of on Matthew 12. Um, so I'll give a little commentary. If you're new, you haven't been following my channel, I read out of the Scriptures version of the Bible. And um, it reads... Um, fairly different than what you're probably used to um, but anyway hope it blesses you let's get the camera flipped around and we will I hope the planet is awakening I really do all right Matityahu or Matthew chapter 12 verse 1 it says at that time, Yeshua went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his taught ones were hungry and began to pluck heads of grain to eat. Remember, I told y'all that a lot of times the scripture lines up with our day. Today's the Sabbath. Let's learn a little something. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your taught ones are doing what is not right to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what Dawid did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him, how he went into the house Elohim and ate the shoe bread, which was not right for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only the priest? Or did you not read the Torah, that on the Sabbath the priests in the set-apart place profane the Sabbath and are blameless? What I say to you, that in this place there is one greater than the set-apart place. And if you had known what these, this means, I desire compassion and not offering. You would not have commanded the blameless. Jesus just quoted uh, Hosea 6.6 6 there. For the son of Adam is master of the Sabbath, and having left there, he went into their congregation. And see, there was a man having a withered hand, and they asked him, saying, Is it right to heal on the Sabbath? So as to accuse him. And he said to them, What man is there among you who has one sheep? And if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, shall not take hold of it and lift it out. How much more worth is a man than a sheep? So is it right to do good on the Sabbath? Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and it was restored as healthy as the other. But the Pharisees went out and took counsel against him, so as to destroy him. But Yeshua, knowing it, withdrew from there. And large crowds followed him, and he healed them all. And he warned them not to make it known, in order that what was spoken by Yeshayahu the prophet might be filled, saying, okay, this is Isaiah 
what we're about to read, Isaiah, quoted from Isaiah 40, 42, verse 1 through 4. Jesus says, See, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my being did delight. I shall put my spirit upon him, and he shall declare right ruling to the nations. He shall not strive nor cry, nor shall anyone hear his voice in the streets. A crushed reed he shall not break, and smoking flax he shall not quench, till he brings forth right ruling to overcome, and the nations shall trust in his name. Then they brought to him one who was demon-possessed, blind and dumb, and he healed them, so that the blind and dumb man both spoke and saw. And all the crowds were amazed and said, Is this the son of Dawid? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This one does not cast out demons, except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. And Yeshua, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every rain divided against itself is laid waste. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then does the rain stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, do cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? Because of this they shall be your judges. If I cast out demons by the spirit of Elohim, they reign of Elohim, the reign of Elohim has come upon you. Or how is one able to enter to a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? And then he shall plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Because of this I say to you, all sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven men. Whoever speaks a word against the son of Adam, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the set-apart spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree rotten and its fruit rotten. For a tree is known by its fruit. You brood of adders, how are you able to speak what is good, being wicked? For the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. The good man brings forth what is good and the good treasures of his heart. And the wicked man brings forth what is wicked from the wicked treasure. I say to you that for every idle word men speak, they shall give an account for of it on judgment. For by your words you shall be declared righteous, and by your words you shall be declared unrighteous. That really should put fear in our hearts. We are forgiven of our sins, but Jesus here tells us that we will give an account of every idle word. The words we speak in anger, the words that we just blatantly spit out of our mouth and spew out of our mouth um, without care. We're going to give an account for that, and that should scare us. All right, so verse 38. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, A wicked and adulterous generation seek after a sign, and no sign shall be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the stomach of the great fish, so shall the son of Adam be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Men of Nineveh shall stand up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And look, a greater than Jonah is here. The, sovereigns of the, the sovereignness of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Shaloma. And look, a greater than Shaloma is here. That's Solomon. Now, when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finds none. Then it says, I shall return to my house from which I came, and when it comes, it find it empty, swept and decorated. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits, more wicked than itself. And they enter and dwell there, and the last of the man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. <clears throat> and while he was still talking to the crowd, see, his mother and brother stood outside seeking to speak with him. And one said to him, See, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking to speak with you. 
But he answered, said to the one who spoke to him, Who's my mother, and who are my brothers? And having stretched out his hand toward his taught ones, he said, See, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the desire of my father who is in heaven is my brother, sister, and mother. That's where Jesus tells us to differentiate between our brothers and our neighbor. Our brothers are the ones who truly seek after Yahweh as we do. Be careful who you call brother. Be careful who you call neighbor. Like I said, that chapter there you could take off and you can go in about two or three dozen studies on that. Um, the Sabbath, what Jesus really means by the Sabbath right there. Um, and so... Let's continue to move on. Isaiah chapter 13. Have you then went out and um, sought out what flax is? Mm-hmm. And um, uh, because it is, it is also spoke of in the Old Testament as a material. Right. Good job, baby. Mama Bear is listening in and following with us. She may iterate here and there. Um. As we read Isaiah and as we read Hosea, kind of look, we're in Isaiah 13. Look at it and kind of vision in your mind the headlines in the news today. Vision our leaders speaking and see if it doesn't line up with what is being spoken here. It's, um, it's uncanny. It's only by Yahweh. Although Isaiah is speaking to the to the nation of Israel now he's also speaking to all the people throughout all time keep that in context and keep that in mind Yeshiyahu 13 verse 1 says the message concerning Babel which Yeshiyahu son of Amon saw lift up a banner on the high mountain and raise your voice to them and wave your hand let them enter the gates of the nobles I have commanded my set of part ones. I have also called my mighty men for my displeasure, my proudly exulting ones. The noise of an uproar in the mountains, like that of many people. A noise of an uproar of the reins of nations gathered together. Yahweh of hosts is gathering an army for battle. That's us, y'all. Um, not only is it for that time, but it's also for us. An army, men and women who will diligently seek Yahweh out and speak the truth even when it goes against popular belief. Verse 5, They are coming from a distant land, from the end of heavens, even Yahweh and his weapons of displeasure to destroy all the earth. How? For the day of Yahweh is near. It comes as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore all hands go limp. Every, man heart, every man's heart melts, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows take hold of them, and they are in pain as a woman in labor. They are amazed at one another, their faces aflame. See, the day of Yahweh is coming fierce with wrath and heat of displeasure to lay the earth waste and destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven of the heavens and their constellations do not give their light. The sun shall be dark at its rising and the moon shall not send out its light. And I shall punish the world for its evil and the wrong for their crookedness. I shall put an end to the arrogance of the proud and lay low the pride of the ruthless. I shall make mortal man scarcer than fine gold and mankind scarcer than the gold of Ophir. So shall I make the heavens tremble and the earth shake from her place in the wrath of Yahweh of hosts in the day of the heat of his displeasure. It shall be as a honey gazelle and as a sheep that no man takes up. Every man turns to his own people and everyone flees to his own land. Whoever is found is thrust through, and everyone taken falls by the sword. And their children are dashed to pieces before their eyes, and their house is plundered. Even their wives are ravished. See, I am stirring up the meads against them, who do not even regard silver, or as for gold, they do not delight in it. A bloodthirsty army is coming that doesn't care about our riches, Kind of like this disease today, it doesn't regard young, old, man, woman, black, white, brown, whether you're rich or whether you're poor, it just seeks to destroy. Verse 18, and bows, and bows dash the 
the young to pieces, and they have no compassion on the fruit of the womb. Their eye spares no children, and Babel, the splendor of reigns, the comeliness of the pride of the Cosdian, shall be as when Elohim overthrew Sodom and Amorah. She shall never be inhabited, nor be settled from generation to generation, nor shall the Arabian pitch tents there, nor shepherds rest their flocks there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their house shall be filled with owls, and ostriches shall dwell there, and wild goats frolic there. Hyenas shall cry in their citadels, and jackals in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come, and her days are not drawn out. Yahweh is coming swiftly. Repent for the day of the Lord is at hand. Let's go to Hosea. Here we see the headlines. Plain and clear. Yep. Absolutely. Hosea. Hosea. Ch chapter, uh, ch chapter 4 and page 601. It'll be at 601 if you're in the Scriptures Bible. Hosea. Hear the word of Yahweh, you children of Israel, for Yahweh has cast against the inhabitants of the land. For there is no truth or loving commitment or knowledge of Elohim in the land. Swearing and lying and murdering and stealing, committing adultery have increased. A bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore the land mourns and everyone living there languishes with the beasts of the field and the bird of the heavens. And the fish of the sea are taken away. However, let no one strive or reprove another, for your people are like those striving with a priest. You shall stumble in the day, and the prophet also stumble with you in the night, and I shall make your mother perish. My people have perished for a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being priests for me, since you have forgotten the Torah of your Elohim, I also forget your children. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. It's not lack of knowledge of, of technology and science and, and medicine. Um, it's a lack of knowledge of Yahweh. It's a lack of fear of His truth. It's this teaching of this false doctrine of uh, prosperity gospel and all this wickedness that is being taught throughout the land today. Um, by our, our religious leaders because they're just regurgitating what they heard their father speak and a little bit's lost and a little bit's lost generation by generation until we get to where we're at today in this culture in America um, and, well really the western culture and it's religiosity and, and churchianity and it's not of Yahweh Yahweh's displeasure is burning against us today Yet we say, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Verse 7. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. As the people increased, they sinned against Yahweh. You should just think about that for a minute. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. My glory they have changed to shame. We speak about a Jesus that does not exist. We talk about a Jesus that is love and only love in our, in our churches. Jesus is love first and foremost. But if you love him, keep his commands. We do not do that. Now, I'm over speaking what we're fixing to read, but I want y'all to really pay attention to this and think about this. And those who speak like this, either rebuke them or quit listening to them. Verse 8, they eat the sin of my people and lift up their desire to their crookedness. It shall be like people, like priests, and I shall punish them for their ways and reward them for their deeds. And they shall eat but not be satisfied, and they shall whore but not increase, for they have stopped obeying Yahweh. Do we not? Do we not preach that the law is done away with? We don't have to do this no more. Verse 11 Whoring and wine, new wine enslave the heart. My people ask for their wood, and their staff declares to them. For a spirit, 
of whorings has led them astray, and they went whoring from under their Elohim. They slaughter on the mountaintops and burn incense on the hills, under oak and poplars and terebinth, because its shade is good. Therefore your daughters commit whoring, and your brides commit adultery. <clears throat> I would not punish your daughters when they commit whoring, nor your brides when they commit adultery. For the men themselves go aside with whores, and slaughter with cult prostitutes, a people that do not understand are thrust down. Men, you've lost your homes. You're not leading your homes. I read that as almost like God has said, you know what, I give up on them. I would not punish your daughters when they commit whoring, nor your brides when they commit adultery, for the men go aside with whores. Wake up, man. Though you are a whore, Israel, let not Yehuda become guilty. Do not come upon Gilgal, nor go up against Beth Awan, nor swear an oath, saying, As Yahweh lives. There is the thing right there. As Yahweh lives. Do not swear that oath. We say in this, in this culture, God bless America. How can God bless America when we're murdering, murdering babies 2,000 a day? We don't care about his we don't care about his law. We don't care about anything. We just want what Jesus has for us, and that is heaven. We're going to miss heaven if we do not love Jesus back. For Israel is stubborn. For America is stubborn. France is stubborn. Canada is stubborn. All the people are stubborn, like a stubborn calf. I don't know if y'all have ever worked cattle or not and you've had to brand your cows. You get some you get some yearling calves that, that can be quite stubborn and they can be a pain in the neck. Would Yahweh not feed them like a lamb in a broad place? Ephraim is joined to idols and let him alone. Their drink is sour and they have hoard continually. Her rulers wildly love shame. Really? America's rulers wildly love shame, do they not? And a wind has bound her up in its wings, and they are ashamed because of their slaughterings. Now remember, Hosea was, was commanded to, to marry the whore. And as we, as we look at that, that totally equates God's people to Him. <coughs> we go a-whoring. We love ourselves rather than love Him. And that's what this whole book of Hosea is about. I would urge you to go read Deuteronomy chapter 23 um, after this video. Man, I think you need to return back to your homes. God has given us a chance. God has given us a chance here to um, to set, be still and know that I'm God, he says. He says, I make you lay down in green pastures. He says, he doesn't ask you, he makes you. We're being made to lay down in green pastures during this quarantine. Man, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? Are you going to lead your family in the word and begin learning the word and leading your family correctly? Because there was a time when I did not, not too long ago. Prior to seven years ago, I was no man of God, and I, I did not leave my family. I'm blessed that the Lord kept my family together, and we did not divorce and separate. But that was all by Yahweh, by His design, and that's how we're able to have our ministry that we have today. All from God. Y'all, we got to read this word. I mean it, and I'm going to push it, and we're going to pray on it. Um, I'm word heavy, and I realize that. My wife is, is the prayer warrior in our family. But I, I, I've got to get us more into prayer as well because I am the leader of this home. So to finish this video out, I hope it blesses you, encourages you, and even frustrates you. But let's go to the Father with word. Dear Heavenly Father, we come humbly before you. We kneel at your throne. We ask you that you would lead us as men in our homes that a revolution would break out across the land of men leading their homes, a new way of life.
for many homes to come. Men who have realized that they have been stubborn as a calf and been stubborn in leading their families, filled with pride, thinking they can go out and, and work all day and then they're justified to go out and spend the night with the guys partying and whooping it up. Father, let us repent from that as a nation. Let us repent as a nation that that revolution would be the revolution that breaks out across this land. We're not going to change nothing with sword or with arrows or with, with our AKs and ARs. We're going to change it by being on our knees in prayer, leading our homes. Father, I pray that this diligence of reading your word would strike out across the land, Lord. I pray that you would continue to keep me diligent to making these videos. I pray that you would inspire those to, to continue to follow my videos, and I thank you for those who do. I thank you for bringing me from where I was to where I am, and I pray that you continue to lead me to where I'm going, that I would fulfill what you've called me to do. I pray that these men watching would fulfill what you've called them to do. I pray that these women and children watching this would fulfill what the Word calls them to do. Father, we just give you praise, honor, and glory this Shabbat day as we honor you and glorify you and all that we do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, y'all. Um, I mean it, man. Y'all need to get, get a hold of your homes. I see it everywhere. Men are not doing their jobs. God has called me to call men into repentance, and he's called me to, to call out this false doctrine that is everywhere. It's plaguing the land. It's like um, um, leaven in the yeast. We're coming up on Passover, and... Um, I find it very, very interesting that this time of plague is coming up before this year's passed over. I'm not calling this end time, so don't you hear me there. I am saying that God is very calculated and he does a lot of things according to his calendar, his way. And if we will watch for it, we'll see it. So let's get prepared for Passover. Um, maybe this year we can't congregate with uh, others like we would like to have Passover in your home ain't no Easter we don't do Easter around here we are going to do Passover because that's Yahweh's declared that time y'all think about it y'all be blessed I love y'all and thank you for following me. if you haven't subscribed subscribe to my channel share my videos and let's get my, my let's get our um, base up and we can get up to, I think it's 500. We can start doing live videos and then, you know, then we can do some cool stuff, um, interact with one another. Y'all be blessed. We'll catch you on the next one.